Hi, this is Ginger Keen. I'm the Clinical Educator for Nursing Professional Development Department, and this presentation is on Code Blue in the hospital and what to do when there is a Code Blue. When you come upon a situation where a patient is not responsive, it can be very nerve-wracking. So take a deep breath, check for responsiveness, shake that patient, shout their name, and if there's no response, call for help and say, code blue, get the crash cart and AED or defibrillator. Then you need to check a carotid pulse. If there's no pulse, you need to start compressions. After you've checked the carotid pulse and there's no pulse, you're going to start compressions. High quality CPR. This requires you to position yourself over the patient. Hospital beds often have a CPR lever or device that will drop the head of the bed and in some cases harden the mattress. Look at your beds on your units for this lever. You need to provide compressions at a rate of 100 to 120. Once more staff come, you can put a backboard underneath the patient if the surface is not hard enough. Do not do this alone. You can do compressions even if you're not getting good compressions. Some compressions are better than none. The floor is a good surface, so if your patient is found on the floor, do not try to move the patient to the bed just to code them. This is a safety issue where the staff can injure themselves and it can delay compressions. Allow full chest recoil, which means do not lean on the chest and allow the chest to re-expand. This is gonna promote a better cardiac output and it'll improve patient outcomes. Just remember, compressions are the priority until defibrillation arrives. A patient can live or can be survive without any breathing or oxygen, but it, you can give all the oxygen you want if the patient does not perfuse that oxygen, then therefore all the oxygen is useless. When another provider can manage the airway, the compressor needs to count out loud for 30 compressions to two breaths. Pause for those two breaths to be given and or the air will go into the stomach and risk aspiration if the stomach is full of air and meets its threshold. Compressors need to switch out at least every two minutes or when fatigued and cannot continue. The compressor who will take over compression should be ready and lined up when the present compressor is ready for the switch. Communication is the key. Continue with 30 to 2 cycles for 5 cycles or 2 minutes if an AED or manual defibrillator arrives to assess rhythm and reassess pulse. Telling the other team members what cycle you're on also helps with everybody being on task as to when to switch compressors. Respirations. Once you have gotten more help, then someone can manage the airway. Most oftentimes it is a respiratory therapist, but anybody that is BLS certified can help with assisting respirations. So grab the AMBU bag, Attach the AMBU bag to the oxygen on the wall or a tank and put that oxygen up to a minimum of 10 to 15 liters per minute. You should remove the pillow from under the patient's head and tilt the head back into what we call a sniffing position. Provide two breaths with every pause and 30 compressions, 30 to two. Ensure you have a proper seal of the face mask. Do not force air. Some air will oftentimes go into the stomach. You want to provide an easy squeeze and you do not have to empty the whole AMBU bag into the patient. Only provide enough to provide a chest rise in over one second. The amount of air is about half the bag. Hyperventilation will result in an increase in thoracic pressure. That will decrease the blood return back to the heart and therefore decrease cardiac output and perfusion to the heart. So do not hyperventilate. The next part of a code is defibrillation. 
I'm going to talk about defibrillation with an AED. An AED is the easiest form of defibrillation. Mostly just turning it on will provide you with prompts as to what to do next. We will go through each of the parts of using an AED for defibrillation. Remember, this is also a priority. You don't want to interrupt compressions, but you also need to not hesitate and get the defibrillator pads on the patient. So attach the pads as quickly with minimal interruption and compressions. Once you have your pads on, please make sure that you have your pl pads plugged into the AED. Once the pads are plugged into the AED, the AED will analyze and will tell you to stop or clear the patient or not to touch the patient. It's analyzing to determine if this is a shockable rhythm. If the AED says a shock is advised, you can continue, continue CPR until fully charged. Once you hear a high tone, the person operating the AED will need to very distinctly and loudly clear the patient visually and verbally. You can do this by making sure nobody is touching the patient, the stretcher or bed, because electricity will follow the path until it hits ground. So if somebody is touching the patient, they also can get shocked. So you will clear the patient saying, clear the patient, shocking, shocking, shock delivered. Pressing the shock button. As soon as the shock button has been delivered, the patient you will see oftentimes jump a little bit with the contraction of their muscles. And then you want to resume compressions immediately, 30 to 2. This is also a good time to switch compressors because usually the person who is doing compression are very tired and it's a lot of work. Now let's talk about a defibrillation with a manual defibrillator. Some units have a manual defibrillator and some of these manual defibrillators also have AED capabilities. First thing to do is place fast pads on the patient. You do not need to put the leads on separately. The pads will pick up the patient's rhythm. So as soon as you turn the monitor on, it actually defaults to the pads as long as it's connected to the little red uh, plug-in. Then turn the dial to the red area if the patient is in V-fib or pulses VTAC for defibrillation. It is basically designed as to follow one, two, three. One is select an energy level. It could, defaults to 120, but you can go up to 200 joules according to American Heart Association. Two is charge the defibrillator. During this charging sequence, you can continue to do compressions while charging, so make sure you're giving high quality CPR during the charging process. Once the charging is complete, the red button will light up. This is when you wanna clear the patient for the shock. Clear and visual, visibly and Make sure nobody is touching the patient and be very loud before you saying that you are clear, shocking, and then hit the button. Once the patient has been shocked, you again will see a jerking of the muscles. Then you want to resume CPR starting with compressions and again make sure you switch compressors each time you after you shock somebody. For code rolls, Usually the leader is a critical care physician, an ACLS hospitalist, a stat nurse, or critical care nurse. Compressor usually requires two or more compressors to switch out. That usually is the role that most new nurses feel comfortable in because they are usually competent in their BLS. Airway management usually is a respiratory therapist but can be a nurse that has BLS training. A monitor, usually the ACLS or critical care nurse will manage the monitor and defibrillation. You can also use an AED because BLS certification does educate you and train you for AED use. IV and uh, medications, uh, nurses designated to administering all medications and managing the IV and IV fluids. A recorder keeps track of time the start of the code, every two minutes when there's a rhythm check, and writes down the drug and intervention and the time it occurred. So the communication is a key part for the leader to give instructions 
such as the IV nurse or med nurse would uh, repeat back the medication and the medication dose. And the recorder would then write down the time that the IV nurse gave the medication. When there is a limited staff, some roles will need to be shared, such as IV and monitor may be combined into one role. Your role in the code. First, stay calm. If nothing else, do compressions. Make sure you call for help. You do not want to be alone, and you have other people that will help you. Believe that you are part of the team. If this is your patient, stay with your patient as long and there's other people doing compressions and airway management. The provider or leader may have questions about what happened to the patient leading up to the code blue. As you become more comfortable in a code blue, you will find that you will be develop confidence and talk about the experience after the code is over, whether it was a positive outcome or whether the patient did not come back. These all will lead to building your confidence. Talking about what went well and what could have been done better is all about the learning process. Let's talk about rapid response team. If you have a patient that is condition is declining, it is essential that you do a quick assessment on your patient to determine the change in condition. Then you want to call for an RRT if patient meets criteria. There is an RRT policy available for you to see what the criteria is. After that, you need to think mom it. This is going to help you keep your focus as what, need, what data you need to collect and interventions you need to do in preparation for the RRT team. V is for vital signs. Obtain a set of vital signs, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. O, oxygen. Assess the saturation. If it's less than 95%, administer O2. You may actually have to also support their breathing if they are unable to adequately breathe on their own with an AMBU bag. M for monitor. Apply a monitor if the patient is not already on one, such as telemetry or in monitor in the unit. And you may also need to get to 12 EDKG. I for IV. If they don't have an IV, obtain IV access. Or if they do have an IV, make sure that IV access is patent. T, treatment. Think about what treatment is needed for the patient. You can prepare treatment or anticipate what is the need. Most importantly, stay with the patient. If this is your patient in your assignment, you'll need to answer questions for the provider. Bring a computer into the room. This way you can look up information such as labs or history that can help understand what brought this patient's condition on. If the patient is transferred to a higher level of care, make sure the family is notified. It's a patient dissatisfier when the family comes in and finds out that the patient was transferred to a higher level of care and they were not notified. So please make every effort to notify the family. This concludes this, pro um, this program, so hopefully this will help you alleviate some of the stresses from Code Blue and RRT. Thank you.